Well, I think I've put into three different categories. The first major unmet need is just improvement in vision early on. Um, you know, at this point, although we've had major advances with anti-VEGFA monotherapy, it's still important to realize that most patients don't gain uh, an enormous amount of vision. There's still a majority of patients that don't gain driving vision, for instance. So early improvement in vision is one unmet need. The second is continued maintenance of the improvement because we know that over time vision gradually gets worse and worse over time with fibrosis. So that's the second major unmet need. And the third one is increased durability so that the treatment is much more sustainable and practical. Well, I think the brolexizumab study is very exciting. Uh, it's a drug that was uh, that has been developed by Alcon Novartis, and brolexizumab is the first of its kind single-strand antibody fragment. Um, it's a humanized product, uh, and it's really a holy grail of a drug because it is the smallest possible way to make an antibody uh, with structures that function without the constant region. So it's a very small product. Uh, it's only 26 kilodaltons big. Um, the advantage of this is that much more of the product can go where it needs to go, so 22 times the molar concentration of Lucentis. So uh, what we expect to see with that uh, is much more of the drug binding where it's supposed to bind. Um, and as such, what we have is we have the top line results uh, that have been released, uh, that we have a press release of that and the top line results of Hawk and Harrier, though those are the two registration trials, uh, show that a majority of patients can be maintained on 12 weeks. The full data set will be presented uh, at subday uh, in the Academy meeting in New Orleans. We don't have the full data set as yet, um, but what we do know from the top line data is that a majority of patients can be extended to every 12 weeks. And um, if that's the case, that means that what we have is potentially a stronger and longer anti-VEGFA agent. And those have major, that, that's a major advantage to us because that means that now we have a more sustainable treatment strategy. There are a lot of targets that are being uh, explored, and the way that I would classify them is the next generation anti-VEGF-A. And in that, I'd put uh, brolexizumab that we've discussed, which is by uh, Alcon Novartis. I'd also put a product called Abisapar Pagol, uh, which is a DARPIN product uh, by Allergan. Uh, the other uh, silo that I would put in are combination agents, and they're combination agents that are particularly exciting, such as OPT302, um, which is a product being developed by a company from Australia uh, named Apthea, and this is a VEGF C and D inhibitor. So combination of our current anti-VEGF A with an anti-VEGF C and D would allow for true pan-VEGF inhibition, so I think that's very exciting. Uh, one that we're also waiting on is squalamine, which is a topical agent uh, that has a broad spectrum of action. Probably the hottest path, uh, pathway right now is the anti-ANG2 pathway. And here there are two drugs, one by Genentech Roche uh, named uh, RG7716, which is a bispecific product that's an, that has an anti-ANG2 arm as well as an anti-VEGFA arm. And the other uh, is a co-formulation called Nesvacumab with Ilea uh, by Regeneron, and that's a co-formulation that's a anti-VEGFA as well as an anti-ANG2. So, We've got, some, we've got those and many other uh, that I haven't mentioned, very exciting drugs in the pipeline. And we're in a, I think we're in a stage where we're now where we're waiting for something to work that will change the way we treat our patients. Mm -hmm.